Hey everybody, Tim here at Doc's Stuff on the Lens. <laughs> Hey everybody, Tim here at Doc's Auto, and today I think we have something exciting. We have, in a goodie bag, or a trash bag, a transfer case. Not just parts, but a full transfer case off of a uh, similar year BMW X3 E83 that had a uh, catastrophic engine failure, otherwise known as the timing chain braking uh, but the transmission and the transfer case were known to be good so we're gonna go ahead and get this guy jacked up get the old transfer case out and get the new one put in and hopefully that will finally solve our problems but first I've got to take about five minutes clean up my mess behind me from other projects and uh, as always I've got a tasty beverage poured today my homebrew so let's go ahead and get the shop space cleaned up here find something good on the tv to watch and get this transfer case swapped out all right so here we've got our new dust transfer case and the biggest problem on the current one is the input shaft here um, spins freely all the way around 360 degrees either way so that tells me that something is broken inside mechanically stuck in the open position and this one you can see you have to turn a lot of resistance to make it turn as soon as you let go it snaps back so that is confirming the suspicion uh, that is wrong with the uh, transfer case currently on the vehicle um, so once I get that one out I am going to do a tear down of it so you can see inside what is broken um, and I'm guessing the the clutch pack itself is either stuck in the open position uh, broken, uh, something like that, uh, whatever reason is causing it not to not to catch and engage. Uh, but once we get this one in the vehicle, we should have front drive line uh, re-enabled. This one only has 100,000 miles on it, I'm told. It came out of a uh, same year X3 that had a timing chain uh, catastrophic failure. So that car was oh, set up for a donor and all the good parts are harvested out of there. So. Uh, you can see we are working underneath with this big old mess. Look at all of my nuts and bolts and tools. And the last thing I've got left here to do is finish getting off the studs for the exhaust. That's the only thing I found in this vehicle that has been rusted uh, beyond the ability to pull off. Otherwise, you know, drive shaft is dropped, exhaust is dropped. Um, I just need to finish these exhaust bolts so I can get this off. Drive line can come out, and then the transfer case can come out. So we will keep working on that. And once I have the old transfer case out, I will uh, show you that side by side um, of the of that input shaft, so you can see uh, exactly what it's doing now with the old broken one and what the new one is doing. And then of course we'll go ahead and pull apart the old one for some education. So. Uh, would have had this out and done by now, but as, as the story goes, Sunday night, four o'clock, I ran out of the bits for my Dremel. So that put an end to my weekend festivities for getting this thing up, fixed, and back out of the garage. So, uh, hopefully get working on this here again today, get more parts off and put parts back on. And we've had quite a bit of interest. Uh, quite a bit of interest for folks interested in the car, uh, but I of course can't send it down the road as it is right now. And I clearly listed in the ad when I got a transfer case or the parts, I would go ahead and replace it. Um, I just happened to get a bunch of requests after I'd already had this thing up on jack stands. So uh, I've already got the part, I'm gonna replace it, get it back together. So whoever drives away with this thing has a fully working vehicle and you know, get inside, you know, engine area is spotless. I went through and replaced the oil seal here. I'm not seeing any leakage around here anymore. Uh, so hopefully that is the end of our uh, oil seal and oil leakage. 
I uh, did replace that uh, connector down here for the coolant hose. I uh, replaced the pulleys for the idler and tensioner. So uh, everything else up in the engine bay runs great, sounds great. And uh, so that's that. So we'll get back to taking more parts off the car and throw on that new transfer case on. So stay tuned. All right, so we've got both the new transfer case here and the old one out of the X3. And the biggest issue I wanted to point out was where the servo motor goes in to the input shaft here for the servo motor shaft. The old one I'm taking out freely spins all the way around, both directions. That should not happen. A little better light, here we go. Freely. For the most part, spins around. That should not happen. If you take a look at the one I'm putting in, you can't spin that. You actually have to put a hand and really crank on it and it snaps back. So that's the issue. We're gonna take this one apart um, and just look at everything inside, see what broke and what it would have taken to rebuild it. Um, now, luckily I found just browsing through Facebook Marketplace one evening, I found uh, this as a parts car uh, by a gentleman, $100, uh, 100,000 miles in the transfer case, uh, 30,000 less than this one has on it and it works. So, you know, it was, it was, uh, really great to find this gentleman, uh, great BMW guy does a lot of, uh, fixes. Um, actually turns out both in the radio control cars and a bunch of other fun stuff. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and bolt the, uh, bolt the servo motor back up to here and go fit it back in the vehicle and then start putting everything back together, the giant mess under the car. So we've got the, um, drive shaft for the front and the rear hooked back up. We have the exhaust to put back in. We have a heat shield to put back in. So just a bunch of stuff to put back on the car. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and just get this started. All right, folks, we are back here with the transfer case from the X3. This is the old one drying the fluid, but I just wanna take this thing apart and see what is broken inside. I know something on this input shaft is broken because it should not make that sound if you can hear it or not, or clunk like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and take all these e-torques bolts out and we'll split this thing and see what it looks like inside. Stay tuned. should be snugged up. Uh, if we make a mess, I guess we make a mess. <clears throat> you can at least see that the, the input seal bearing from the, uh, from the transmission, that was still a good tight seal, so that was nice to see. Um, and yet, when you rotate one, for the rear, the front rotates, but there's not a whole lot of resistance there. And it should be catching and it's not. So we'll just go ahead and split this case and see what we see. All right, well, I got it split, albeit a little messy up here on the bench.
And first thing off the bat, what do you notice? Got all the slop in here. Granted, a little bit here from the shaft, but there's still quite a quite a bit of slop in here. Uh, so that wasn't the determining factor of this not working, but uh, didn't help. Uh, secondly, look at all this good sludge down here. Metal shavings. Now the key part I want to look at is these fingers here. These should be spring loaded. Those are nowhere near spring loaded for anything that this would use. <laughs> Those should be a nice tight, tight spring and they should clip back on this input shaft because this is where that actuator motor attaches in and you would see it spin and you can see these fingers should actually have pressure but they do not so there we have our culprit folks So what I'll do next is I'm going to take this whole thing apart, just poke around in here. Um, I have no reason to rebuild this. Um, I mean, all the parts in here um, look like they're good. I mean, mechanically, there's nothing broken. The gears are good. The bearings are all free and tight. Um, if you were going to rebuild it, you'd want to go ahead and redo this chain. Um, and then in here is the uh, is all the friction discs. So we'll go ahead and get into those, and I will I will show you those. All right, folks, we are back, and now I can show you with all the other parts inside removed um, what had failed in here. Um, so in here is this wedge uh, that turns to actuate and engage these fingers. And that's powered by the servo motor. Um, many issues are with just the gear in here. That was not the case. Uh, but when the servo motor spins, when the vehicle detects wheel spin, it's supposed to turn this wedge in here, the shaft, and these fingers are supposed to engage, which connects to the front drive line. Now with this here, there should be resistance. There's absolutely no resistance from these fingers, and as you can see, they don't spring back in place. So there was no way that this drive line was ever going to engage for the X drive or the all-wheel drive when it was needed. So my original thinking of this clutch pack in here um, possibly is still accurate, but when I take this out, and this is where those friction discs would have been. Um, there is a lot of slop in this entire unit here and these, these two fingers. So I haven't taken this apart and I'm probably just not gonna put the time into seeing why this failed that has so much slop. Um, all I know is that it does and you can see there are a couple of of balls in here, bearings that help guide this. Um, but there's just way too much slop here for this thing to ever engage and catch. So um, the nice thing I found is that all the bearings in here do seem really good. They're smooth, they're not chunky or clunky. Um, this pump behind here, I assume it works. But, uh, you know, we're just not going to put any more effort into fixing this one because the new one is in the car. I have verified that it does at least spin the tires up on blocks, which this one did not do. We just went ahead and swapped out the uh, transfer case fluid. Got a quart of the S-Tech off of FCP Euro, and that is in. So now all I've got to do is put the exhaust back on and it'll be ready to go. And you can see down in here too, there's just a ton of sludge. Where's the screwdriver here? 
become such a mess. You can just see all the sludge that was in here from gasket material. Uh, but you can see the sludge in here from just wear on everything. So, you know, it's good that we swapped it out. Good that I'm not gonna go ahead and try and repair any stuff in here. So we'll go ahead and put the exhaust back on and go take it out for a drive. All right, everybody. Well, we did it. The X3 is fixed. It is a nice sunny day and is ready to get sent down the road. And uh, you know, this thing runs and drives excellent. The new transfer case is smooth. Um, our dirt roads out here still a little covered with ice and spots. You can feel that front and drive line kick in uh, instantly. Um, I actually almost like this a little better than my uh, 2012 <clears throat> X3. It seems to grab uh, a little better, uh, but you know, I've only driven it a few times. Uh, both of the vehicles actually and had a kick in, so um, I would expect there to be some difference between uh, first revision and second uh, for the technology in there. But anyways, the car is back together. It is a tad dirty from our test drive, uh, but uh, we'll go ahead and get that cleaned back up. Uh, otherwise, it is good to go. We've only got the hood up here because I have a battery maintainer uh, on it uh, since it does not get to reside in the garage anymore uh, it has been kicked outside so that's why it just needs to go uh, go down the road and find a new home uh, but but you know inside it is nice and clean and nice and warm in here today We've got those weather tech floor mats up front here uh, one back in the cargo area at the uh, got the hands-free thing here uh, so we are driving safe, Bluetooth module, new springs, new rotors all around, had new tires last year. Those are nearly new nubs are still on them. Of course, the new transfer case, the new idler and tensioner pulleys, and the uh, fitting for the coolant uh, coming out of the block. So. It's had a great amount of work done to it. Um, great car. And, uh, you know, if it was just me cruising around, I would probably keep this thing. It's a fun little car. I really enjoyed driving it and really enjoyed working on it. So uh, we will go ahead and just close this project out finally. I'm so happy we were able to fix it and actually uh, get it back to its pristine driving condition, the ultimate driving experience or the ultimate driving machine. That's what it is for BMW. Uh, so we'll go ahead and look for our next project. I think the biggest one is going to be turning this whole space, as you saw, into our shop. So uh, I don't know, maybe the neighbor will let me drive his excavator this spring. Who knows? Uh, but we'll wrap that up. And thanks for watching the series. If you do like this, go ahead and like and subscribe below if you have not yet. Tell your friends, tell your coworkers. Go ahead, post it on social media. Let's just get us some uh, some more likes and subscribers here. So again, take care and have a great day. Bye bye.